my family brought me here. I think right after World War II was over and gas rationing had ended and you could get enough gasoline to drive from South Florida up to Silver Springs. Uh, this was uh, one of the great tourist attractions of Florida during that period and it was an exciting adventure for, for a 10 or 11 year old boy to see this beautiful place. At first I thought the springs were a space and then I thought, no, actually the springs are a force. By producing art that is visual and producing documentation through television and film, our job is to bring this to people to see it. It's out of sight, out of mind. It's underground. It's as beautiful as the Grand Canyon. Most people have no idea it even exists. Florida is home to more freshwater springs than any region in the world. They have shaped the landscape and culture from the moment they began to flow thousands of years ago. The earliest Native Americans worshipped these life-giving springs as sacred. European colonists settled around these springs, while steamships later transported the earliest tourists to them. Not only do our springs fuel rivers and nurture a wonderland of plants and wildlife, they flow from an aquifer that provides drinking water for 90% of Floridians and tourists. Although the related economics of recreation, real estate, and potable water are in the billions of dollars, their aesthetic and emotional values are immeasurable. Equinox Documentaries explores the secrets of these springs, revealing complex limestone chambers, rare and endemic animals, and prehistoric fossils of Ice Age animals. And in the process, we discover the most serious and disturbing secret of all. Our enchanting and mystical Florida springs are dying. Our documentary relies on a wide diversity of informed sources to help tell this compelling and urgent story. Our on-camera sources include former Florida Governor and U.S. Senator Bob Graham, who has become an impassioned champion of our threatened springs. Springs cave explorer and mapmaker Eric Hutchinson, who has literally gone where no man has gone before to create detailed maps illustrating the maze of water-filled tunnels feeding our spring systems. Artist Margaret Ross Tolbert, who is widely known for her expansive and expressive artwork of our springs. The focal point is Silver Spring, as it is the largest of our 1,000 springs in our state, and because of its long and colorful history, it is the best known. But we will also examine others, like Wakaiwa on the St. Johns River and White Springs on the Suwannee River, to show how they share the same values as well as the same threats. There's nothing that connects the history of Florida more than our springs. The earliest settlers here, pre-European, the Indians, uh, they settled around springs because they were a place of not only water, but also tranquility, a place where they could fish and support themselves. Uh, then they became an early tourist attraction in Florida as people uh, discovered the state uh, by experiencing the springs. We learn that all of our springs are nourished by rainfall seeping into the porous uplands of what is known as a spring shed, which may be miles away from where the sparkling water emerges from the ground. We get about 50 plus inches of rain a year. We have some of the great rivers and springs uh, of North America. People took water for granted, uh, but what we have learned is that we can also mess it up uh, and this is not a bad example of that. Uh, there's about half the amount of water flowing out of the springs uh, as has been the historic level in Silver Springs and the pollution levels uh, are dramatically above uh, what they have been in the past and above what this system can assimilate. Springs cave explorer and map maker Eric Hutchison knows our springs intimately. He cautions those state officials who make theoretical decisions that are causing our springs to decline in both flow and in water quality. The technology just isn't there to read what's underground. They can read a little bit here and a little bit there, but if you really want to know what's there, you really have to go. Humans have to go back and pick
penetrate and push as far as they can to see what is going on back there, to study which direction the water is coming from, where the water is coming from, to put our instruments to tell what is in the water and where it's coming from, how old the water is. Did it rain here 200 years ago or did it rain here last week to tell us what is going on with the surface and how easily it could be polluted or not. Hutchison not only sees the finite dynamics of our springs from the inside out, he creates artistically detailed maps that help others see it too. Then when you get looking at the geology and what the water did to the geology to carve these caves and carve these rooms, and it's, it's Mother Nature's artwork. It's like the most beautiful thing you could experience, similar to uh, the parks out west, the Grand Canyon and these kinds of things. It's just a beautiful thing. It's right here in Florida under our feet. So we're taking we're taking a slice of Florida, collecting all of this artistic and scientific data and producing a historical document. While Hutchison's maps of the aquifer rely on exacting detail, the more impressionistic art of Margaret Ross Tolbert explores the eternal beauty of our springs and how that aesthetic appeals to the transcendence of the human spirit. One day, a high school friend said, let's go to Jenny Springs and let's rent some masks. And that was it. That did it. It was like the different, I saw the different worlds and I was just like going through the looking glass and I was, that was a eureka moment for me. There's a certain honesty about really trying to just, everything goes into conveying this kind of feeling and this certain experience, a spatial experience, an emotional feeling. I think taking people to that place or reminding them or somehow suggesting there's a place like that, then all the other things follow. Hopefully a cross section of society that likes my work will start to learn about what informs the work and what I consider very important and why is, are the springs so crucial in inspiring this art which wouldn't happen without them. And so then I want them to think about things like why do we use so much water? We use more than anyone in the world for gallons per day or why is it why is it the discharge is down why is it that there's pollution how can you change these things I think all it takes is some honest reactions from all of us and a lot of this would be would be changed and um, I also want I like the thought instead of commodifying water I guess the art of it is that water in its natural places is something that we need to protect and always learn from clearly Florida's magical and life-giving springs once believed to be infinite, are declining in flow and becoming polluted with nutrients that cause explosive growth in algae and other plants. Silver, once the most powerful spring in the world, will run dry in 20 years if current trends continue. Despite this staggering loss, water management districts in Florida are being dissolved, river and springs restoration projects scuttled, and standards for water quality abolished. As Floridians, we owe a debt of gratitude to the folks who are making this film uh, to develop a sense of personal responsibility. Programs like this help uh, to fill that uh, education need and by the beauty of the environment that's being presented, uh, the challenge to its protection. I think building an army of Floridians uh, who are committed uh, to the an ethic of Florida and fulfilling that obligation to future generations.